keep walking no matter what. Don't be discouraged. Life is not an exact science. It flips, it flops, it zigs, it zags. And that's what we're talking about here on AM Live today. We've had from our panelists, we have the last one on the lectern right now. This is Dr. Tim Kiruhi, and he's also uh, ready to give us a slice of keep walking no matter what. Questions, love. Uh, thank you, Dibao, and uh, good morning, viewers. Good morning, fellow panelists. It's a joy for me to be back here and uh, to be able to discuss a topic that, as my colleagues have mentioned, is very important, especially given where we are at as a country right now. I thought of picking up uh, this topic on, on, on four virtues, four points that I thought would be helpful to the viewers this morning. And I decided for ease of my reference, uh, I'll take the first words, uh, first letters of each of those two words. So the first one is K from the word, uh, you know, keep. And I thought about knowing why you are walking. You know, that's the first point I think to begin, is to begin to ask, why am I doing this? Why am I in this at all? Uh, the why is important. It speaks to purpose and often helps people bring out their passion. I believe that they are the difference between an average performer, whether at work or in any other setting, and an excellent one is the one who has discovered their purpose. You know, that's part of our mission at the International Leadership University, to help people discover their purpose and then be equipped to be able to bring that out, that purpose for the benefit of society. Working from a sense of calling, not just duty, even in the, in the field of uh, you know, uh, motivation studies, they have found out that salary is not even a good motivator. It's called a hygiene factor, you know, from Hertzberg's theory. Uh, so we, it is important for people to discover why they do what they do, or why they do what they want to do. I can often tell, you know, a good steward in a hotel or in a restaurant from one who's just trying to <laughs> make life work. Mm -hmm. And often they'll tell you, yeah, I'm just here to make, make money, you know. <laughs> but others, you can tell they love what they do. So knowing why you are doing what you are doing. Are you working from passion? Do you live from a sense of purpose? Because that will help you to be able to go the extra mile, to sacrifice without complaining, and so on. This morning, I believe for my, my colleagues and I, it's about that bigger purpose for me. Being here is an opportunity to extend my own life purpose, which I believe is to influence people to be ethical, to be engaged citizens, and to be empowered to make a difference. Incidentally, that is a vision of the CBC curriculum, I was very excited to hear that this just earlier this week, is to help raise children and adults in the future who will be ethical and engaged and empowered. This also frees me to serve without necessarily asking for money. I serve on many non-profit organizations, on boards and so on, because it's within my larger purpose. Viktor Frankl, some of us have read quite a bit, he's written quite a bit, he's now, he was an Austrian psychologist, and he's one of the few people who survived the Holocaust. Most other people died because they just gave up. Uh, just like Peter was saying, you know, it can be difficult out there when you're incarcerated. But Victor had a desire to publish a manual. And he said that every day when he just felt like giving up, he would say, this manual will, must be published, and so on. And of course, you know, he could only write it on pieces and so on to be able to finish. And he, he, has, he has this quote that he who has a why can survive any how. When you have a purpose to live for, that's your why. It doesn't matter how the house will be, you know, because you can't you know, control the circumstances of your life. Things happen, can happen, you know, life changes and so on. People change, circumstances change, but remember your you why. They know why you are doing what you are doing. Secondly, persevere. You know, the last word of the, uh, the word keep. I think that's again, is the difference between those who finish and those who just start. I have a number of friends who've done long marathons. I've only done my 10Ks at the stand chart. <laughs> and uh, they say that a time comes when the pain in your body is excruciating. And if you focus on your pain, you'll give up. You must forget your pain to be able to keep going, to keep running in this case. So persevere, you know, and uh, be able to, to handle that situation. This is what helps us with, you know, to endure and to find the bigger purpose, even in suffering, in pain to ask, why is this happening to me? Again, a number of us quoted from the, 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 the holy book, the scriptures, talks about suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope, and hope does not disappoint. Right now, I'm involved in a turnaround situation. And many times, you know, there are times I wonder, you know, what is the reason for me being here? I have to keep remembering, I have to persevere to see this rule, keep persevering. We cannot just pursue happiness. I think that's one of the challenges of our time. We've been told everything is about being happy. 
you know, younger people would say, you know, I left that job because I didn't feel it. You know, it's, very often it's not just about feeling good. It's about remembering why you're doing what you're doing and pursuing it with perseverance. The third one is to watch. You know, going to the, the second word, walking. Watch. Watch your weight. Watch other things that are around you. Um, the second half of the run is more challenging, and you often need to get off the things that might encumber you from being able to finish. Again, allow me to quote from uh, Hebrews 12, that uh, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles to run with perseverance that is marked out for us. For us, we have to find a way of throwing off those things that hinder us. I thought about three that most viewers might be, you know, may be facing today. One of them is a fear of failure. That keeps many people from taking the next step. I've tried it before. That business did not work out. No, that, that, uh, that enterprise did not make, make it or that partnership. No fear of failure. Secondly, negative emotions. Again, um, some of my colleagues have talked about that, you know, being careful of negativity. Could be coming from past mistakes, but I found that in my working with people, many times it's from unforgiveness. Something bad happened to you, somebody wronged you, crossed your path and so on, and you just can't let go. So that holds you from being able, it's a weight on you, keeps you from going forward. But finally, think about a scarcity mindset. I think that's very common around us. You know, the two of us cannot succeed at the same time. One of us has to be down for the other one to be up. And I think that, you know, leads to jealousy, a lot of competitiveness at the place of work, or even in community, in leadership, and so on. So watch those things. Finally, I thought that the, the biggest reason why this will all come together, you know, working on my G, is to have a goal that's not yourself. I think that's the, the mistake we make in life. Even for those who do business, the goal is not to make money. Often it's to serve others. And I thought the biggest goal in life is to please God. So my G is God, pleasing him, getting his world done. Think about you know, running a race or, or walking and waiting for the celebration at the very end. Kenyans are used to doing that because we are world beaters. But imagine that your well done is not just from yourself, your friends, but ultimately you have that well done, good and faithful servant. We have a goal of leadership, a theory of leadership called the path goal theory of leadership. And what that theory basically says is that the leader's task is to clarify the goal, to help the followers, the people, the team, to be very clear why we are doing what we are doing. So that's the knowing. I know I wanted to kind of summarize it with that. But also the leader's responsibility is to make the path easier to walk on, to remove the obstacles. Those are the, those are the weights, the things, and to keep people, help people persevere, and ultimately to remember that they need to finish well. You know, Victor uh, Frankel, you know, talked uh, quite a bit about that. That, uh, you know, it's, life is not just about pursuing happiness, it's, it's finishing well. And I thought about the reason why God is important in the picture. is both because he gives us power to live beyond ourselves, to go beyond what we can do as human beings, but also, more importantly, to do it for the right reason, the right motivation. My, my, my definition of ethics is very simple, doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason, uh, for the right motivation, uh, uh, sorry, in the right way, for the right motivation. And I think many times in terms of why am I doing what I'm doing and to how to be motivated right is to have something beyond yourself. So let's keep walking, you know, if we remember those principles. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you, Dr. Tim, there. Uh, let's keep walking. And uh, also he's giving you a post giver, uh, just breaking it down, f sort of an acronym, starting with the K. No, why are you walking? And the operative word there is why. Have you discovered your sweet spot in life? Have you discovered your purpose, right? Are you working from a sense of a calling that you don't need to be dragged to work? You don't need to be pushed to work. You have a calling, you have a passion, you have you know, a flaming desire to actually do what you normally do, right? Do, do you live from a sense of purpose? That is the question. Or is the salary really motivating you? And of course, he asked, if he who has, he quotes Victor, he who has uh, a why, uh, can live anyhow. Is that how he say it? Or I'm just quoting it. Survive. Can survive anyhow. So it doesn't matter what is really thrown your way, you will still survive. So those are our panelists. I can see also reactions uh, on, on social media. I just want to pick one or two, then we shall continue with the discussions here. Uh, I picked some of the excellent points they raised, and uh, we're here, of course, to encourage you this morning. Let's just begin with uh, Gilbert. We have Gilbert here saying, Tell Dr. Ezekiel, the reason of negative publicity is because many are suppressed with problems coming from these vices. And like they, the few who feel or feels that life is good in Kenya and we positively feel it. This is what Gilbert Ucheng feels. 
Also, we have Oriwo Jr. Stephen saying, I'm afraid we no longer have leaders at political platforms. We happen to just have, we happen to just have just some rotten entrepreneurs who bought their way to the top because responsibility, accountability, and ethics is never in the vocabulary. They have never heard of those. Never. Then we have uh, Dominic Okari saying, such a great team uh, there, Ibal. I'm really loving it and getting inspired. Such super minds. Thank you, Dominic Okati there. Also, we have John Moranga, Moranga Jackson. He said, this is Kenya where no justice for the poor and corruption is a key to success uh, for the rich. Uh, those are some of your reactions there. Many of them, I shall just uh, be, uh, will be picking some of them and beaming your way as well to just discuss. We want to buckle down now to discussions with our panelists, just beginning with uh, uh, Dr. Ezekiel Mutua, who started off from uh, the Lactin. And he started with a very uh, poignant note to poison a nation, poison its stories. And I think also media was getting a flag here on how also we're relaying our stories. But is it true that all the stories that are beamed from our media, from newspapers, magazines, uh, uh, TVs, uh, all of them are negative? So we want just to hear from uh, Dr. Ezekiel Mutua. Let's just begin from this. Have we poisoned this nation? Are we wallowing in poison as it is? And how can we sort of detox? Uh, Dibal, the truth is that we've had negative press and negative media. Mm. Uh, the philosophy that when a dog bites a man, yes, it's not news, but when a man bites a dog, it's the headlines. Uh, as for far too long been the narrative that our media picks. Uh, and I'm not trying to be blind to the realities of life that we've got challenges that the media has to focus on, that the media is the watchdog of society, that the media is the custodian of public good. Uh, they have to watch what the government is doing for Ajiko and report corruption and vices in society. But life is not just about uh, negativity and the few people who are rotten. This country is a great country. This nation is blessed by God with the resources, with great minds, with very hardworking people, with stories about our world-beating athletes, uh, who carry the flag of Kenya uh, across the globe every day. We have somebody winning gold and winning this. We have the likes of Eliud Kipchoge, mm -hmm. who said, no, human is limited. We people who are doing great things yes. in different spheres of life. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a tendency to focus on the few who are rotten. There's a tendency to focus more on the negative side of things. There's a tendency to focus more on what is not working as opposed to what is working. And no nation no institution, mm -hmm. not at the family level, not at the leadership level, no institution grows by just looking at what is not working. That is important for us to be able to have a strategy to grow and to be able to fight corruption and to be able to live a decent life. But we can't just give negative stories and stories of depression, stories of corruption and murder and the bad guys. Out of every, uh, the, you know, one cabinet uh, secretary, mm -hmm. like the one we are reading, former cabinet secretary who is being caught up in an issue, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not passing judgment because the, uh, the process, the, the justice system will, 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 will have to uh, go through and see. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're, they're wonderful. I know ministers, I know cabinet secretaries, I know government officials who are in the office so early in the morning who listen to people, who do great things, but their stories are never told. I know mothers in the village who toil to take their kids to school and do a lot of things, unimaginable, hard work, and who toil and eat from the sweat of their brow, and they give hope to their people. I know preachers like uh, Reverend Jenka here who preach hope and give inspiration to their people and the, to the congregants every day. Why don't we focus on that? That is where I was coming from when I, talk, I, quoted, I quoted Ben uh, Okri uh, in saying that to poison a nation, just focus on the negative stories. Uh, and then the people become negative. People hate their government. Mm -hmm. People oh, despise leadership. And this is not just government, leader, political leadership. Let me tell you, the moment we focus on just seeing our bosses as evil, as people are just uh, amassing wealth, and we are, we, we are nothing. We are the, 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 the children of a lesser God. Yes. I can tell you nothing works. And let me give you my personal story, just to encourage uh, Gilbert, uh, in terms of, yes, there are challenges. I'm not tr trying to preach blind optimism. But like Barack Obama said, there is hope. We can have what he calls the audacity of hope. We can focus on the greatness of our country. 
All right. We can focus on the, the, the resources and the blessings God has given us. I was brought up in abject poverty in a place called Kaloleni in Mwala. I passed very well in 1983, scored points enough to take me to my Chaco school. But I had no, uh, no, 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 no mentor, nobody in the family who treasured education. My parents were illiterate. I ended up in a market school called Popular High School in Kangundo that closed down. And I had to do some bridge course that was called KJSE with 33 points out of that six. Great performance, but I ended up dumped in a marketplace that, uh, that, 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 that closed down. And, and then later on, I was to use my Form 2 certificate to go and look for a better school in Mwala Secondary School. My story of education has been a difficult one and zigzag. Uh, between my first degree and my master's, I took 15 years because I had to go back and look for my siblings and support my family that was very poor. And I did my PhD, I finished my PhD at 50 years. What I'm trying to say is, if you believe in yourself and if you, have, you surround yourself with the positive thinking people, what, saved my, what changed my story was my teachers who inspired me and, and, and celebrated me. It is a preacher in the church. It is the, the people who taught me in Sunday school yes. who gave me hope okay. that life is not just about where you come from. Thank you. And so these are the stories I'm saying. Why don't we tell the stories of Ezekiel Mutua All or right. Reverend Peter Jenga or of my brother here who says he was incarcerated Thank and you. he came out of prison to become the great guy that he is. We, we, shall, we shall hear those stories. But Rebecca also is asking, uh, this is Rebecca Chiare, should we then shut our eyes to the injustices being meted out directly and indirectly by the failing government systems and agencies which he is a part of whoever is a part of that he's talking about, right? Could we just open that floor? He says we are posing our nation with the negative stories. We have also good stories that we are not actually relaying. But should we keep silent on what is really happening? No, no. Who will tell this? No, no, not really. We can't afford to do that. It would be, it would be foolhardy for us to think that everything there is rosy and nice. There are people who are facing very heavy challenges. We have systems which are broken down. What, and I think we should take cognizance of the fact that we have systems which need to be changed. The question is, if I'm going to spend every day of my life thinking about what could be in the judiciary, I am not the Chief Justice, I have no chance in heaven or hell to change that system at this point from where I am, what benefit is that going to be? Uh, I need to be asking myself, is there something I can do where I am? If I hate corruption, so much, and I'm willing to preach about corruption so much, am I myself corrupt? Mm -hmm. That is something I can do something about. I can choose to say I will not be corrupt and remain at that level. So what am I saying? You've got to do what you can. I am not the president. I, I can tell you for a fact, I have very bright ideas as to how to change this country. But you know what? He is. I'm not. But you know, I'll let him worry about the things he ought to worry about, and I worry about where I spend every day of my life and do what I can. Talking about the, the media, this newspaper is probably the only thing that somebody reads. Mo we are not readers as a, as a people, and they take time to read this nation and then dis discuss it uh, and debate the rest of the day. If all you have is murder and rape and corruption, that is what will be going on in the lives of many people because they are not reading and therefore the appeal is not to ignore what is not working the appeal is to look for good things and talk about good things foreigners think we are crazy because they can see the opportunities in this country they want to come here we are busy running away to go and do some menu jobs to go and, and be slaves instead of looking for opportunities here now is there a responsibility on those who have positions of responsibility, of course. And they ought to do the best they can while they are there to make life better for us. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Pete, uh, let's hear from you. Let me walk over us and uh, try and make uh, Reverend uh, Geoffrey Njenga smart uh, with, with the mic. It's a bit tacky there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you don't want me to look good. I know. Uh, no, you look good. Uh, <laughs> I ask you to, to enhance your looks. Yeah. <laughs> Pete, continue, please. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Debao, make me look good, too. You're looking good. <laughs> You're looking good. You're okay. You can't be better than me. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time. <laughs> Vain competition. Yeah. Pete, continue. Debao, I'm just thinking uh, about the question that one of the uh, people, viewers, just asked. 
about ignoring the realities. You know, this morning I woke up and I did something that I generally do not do. Um, I opened up WhatsApp. I, I, I generally don't do it as the first thing because I have become used to receiving negative stories or little videos of things, scandals, or something that's going on that sets my mind on a wrong direction. And I, I sort of broke my own rule and I, I just sort of flipped through to see what was there. And I, I saw a little video of one of the politicians, one of our MPs was speaking, mm -hmm. talking about the, the county government debts, talking about national debt, talking about corruption. Yes. It was a little short clip that basically said, it is hopeless. Mm. We are a failed state. Mm. And he left it there. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, so you've given me nothing except to tell me, give up. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm saying to myself that these situations, these realities that we face, either can or cannot be fixed. Mm -hmm. That's a decision we have to make. Absolutely. It's, uh, first of all, you decide if they can, then let's sit down, take stock of the reality. And I think this is the, 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 the challenge of leadership. Mm -hmm. Because this is what you call this leadership forum. Yes. Leaders, political and otherwise, need to be in the place of bringing reality on the table and then saying, yes, we can. Mm. And then move on to what do we need to do to solve these things. Mm. And I think that's the problem that uh, many of us are pointing fingers at one politician or one government official or another. And, and let me tell you, there are people watching this show right now who have in them the ability to be able to influence parliament. Yes who can actually offer themselves for elective post. But they sit because they say politics is dirty, they say things are corrupt, and so they will sit on the sideline. But I don't believe that the solution is just in the political or government realm. What I was saying earlier in my, my time of speaking here is that we have to attack this thing from all fronts. Mm -hmm. There is the macro and those in position who have an opportunity to do something for this nation, but there's also me in my lowly place to say, I will pick up that starfish and throw it into the, into the ocean. I will do my bit where I am because this is as important as the big macro changes that we're talking about. This is the hummingbird uh, that uh, Ungari Madai was telling us. Precisely. Yeah, so Precisely. don't give up. You know, once you see that particular inferno licking up the, the forest. And do you know your little Yeah, thing, your, your little, little contribution. You do, your contribution. Mm -hmm, it really so matters. You look very little. But it, it is, and let me support what Peter, Peter is saying. We'll come to you, we'll come to you. Exactly. You know, I just wanted, I thought it's very really important. You know where I am? Yes. And I, I think there are so many of us, I'm just giving an example. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I have this uh, vision and, and a way of working like I'm the president. Because where I am, when I speak, is a, a picture, portrait, is behind me. And I don't expect the president to ever come to KFCB and regulate fuels. So I do it like there's nobody else that matters. And if there's a question, it begins and ends with me. I don't say, oh, there are bad policies or the president. I don't escalate it because it gave me a job. And that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the Let's do our little thing where we are. Let's change things. Fantastic. Change something. And I always say, even if it is changing the table to face the other way, I am a change thank agent. You. And I'll do it whatever the little thing I can do. Mm -hmm. Even if it's saying thank you to someone. Even if it's saying you are great. You look beautiful today. You. you are dressed well. Give hope. Don't just depress people with negativity, accusations, and, and, and blame, and pointing figures. Thank you. Give hopes to somebody today. Mm -hmm. Tell them you look great. Tell them you are smart. Tell them you are beautiful. You didn't tell me I'm smart. You no, no, are yeah. smart. You should start you are by awesome. A, a, an Even example. though you lead this program. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Exactly. Let's come to Peter right now and uh, just hear from Peter as well. Goodbye, Your story. I'm not smart. I'm not smart. It's the truth. I like your, your sincerity. Yes. Right. Let's hear from <laughs> right. Let's hear from Peter. I think one of the the things is I, we are in commonality here. I yes. mean, I'm just looking at the notes I've taken or I've made, and it just agrees with what, I mean, I'd written them even before they shared. <laughs> and we are on, in one agreement that we are the leaders. We're not, we're not supposed to look at that detached person as the leader out there. When you're the leader, mm -hmm. when you have that garbage in your car, you've yes. used your, your paper bag, then you're driving, you stop, you push down the window of your Mercedes Benz and throw it out and expect someone to come and pick it. Mm. We are messing our country than blaming the systems. Mm. What are we doing at our, at our levels? I mean, and then we want to operate in silos. We don't want to work together. 
It's like we are competing in doing, you know, I, I want to be recognized as I'm the best. Fine, let's compete in doing good, I agree. But let's not bring others down as we go up, mm -hmm. or as we seek to go up, because that also drops the, 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 I mean, the overall view of the, of the nation. But then the thing is, who will make our politics clean? if the clean people want to stay away. Mm. Mm. We can't be sitting there and saying, especially the middle class, I want to tell you the middle class, me, I'm not a politician, <laughs> and I don't aspire to be a politician. Are you sure? I Why don't you aspire to be a politician. <laughs> but I talk a lot with politicians. Yes, yes. I, I know the levels to which we, we, you know, we, 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 we talk, and I give it straight to them. The key thing is the middle class are the biggest complainers mm -hmm. because they also contribute the biggest to the economy. Yes. What are they doing to make the country clean? When you're talking of corruption in the system, that this company got this tender and gave this money, who gave it? Mm. We, are com we, are, we are looking at the, at, the, at the taker and not looking at the giver. If it's public money being spent wrongly, is the private sector involved in it? Where is KEPSA today? I'm not hearing KEPSA out there saying our members, we are going to balkanize our members mm. who've been involved in these big corrupt deals. There'll be Pitt took it, Dibal took it, whoever took it, you are always we are always pointing fingers. And we should stop being a finger-pointing nation. Mm -hmm. We should own up. We should own up and say we've messed here and we have to move it from this going forward. But then the other thing is everyone has a chance to fight corruption at their level. Mm -hmm. I saw it in prison. I mean, the prison's department, I don't want to praise it unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. But I think it's one of the departments I saw having gone there when it was a torture chamber and left at the stage where it was an empowerment center I saw the transition and I saw people buying into it. There are people who didn't want the change. There are people who opposed it. Even when the female leaders came on board like Madame Wanini, Madame Moturi, and they said, this is what we need to do. I know some of my male mentors and uh, teachers, as we call them, the, the warders, were like, no, this lady is not a blah, blah, blah. You know, we have to stop and say every Kenyan deserves a right to lead. Every Kenyan, as long as they have that capability. We have very powerful women leaders, ethical leaders. We are not giving them a chance because we are a patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. I come from the point that everyone is a leader. I mentor young people. I don't call them kids. I call them leaders at that age. And whether they're in their homes, when they're interacting with their parents, they should show their parents, they should show their teachers mm -hmm. that leadership at that earlier stage. Yes. But one of the reasons, one of the issues that was raised that I'd like to address is about the media. I know I have my love-hate affair with the media. I've had it for some time mm -hmm. uh, and for my own reasons. But that does not, I, I support everyone's um, right to share information because it's under our constitution. The key thing is we sometimes want to bash the media and we also call the media the public watchdog. Some of these things that are happening in this country, if the media kept quiet, we wouldn't know about them. We wouldn't have any conversation about it. The second thing is if the media didn't bring it at that particular time, because the media, if people haven't realized, social media became very, it's, it's a disruptive tool. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, that's the model. Social media is disruptive. But even main media now, mainstream media, is becoming disruptive. So they're stopping the bad guys in their steps and letting them know, hey, we are watching you. Hey, we know this. Hey, we are going to bring this out. Mm. No which wants to be outed in daylight. And so why don't we support the institutions? They come from the thought like if Dibal or Nation Media or Standard Media, whichever media defends me, I have a right to go to court. I have a right to say that, hey, I need 20 million for this, from these guys for defaming me. And the courts will award me if they've defamed me. And I believe they have legal in-house people who will advise them on what to run and what not to run. I'm not here to defend the media, but I think we should give the media its space and also give them the information, the real information, because we could say they're, 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 they're purveying wrong information. Are we hiding information? Are we holding it back? If my dad is a criminal, if my dad is a crook, and I'm driving a V8, bought by public funds. Am I ready to go to Kinoti on Kiambu Road and tell Kinoti that V8 in our compound mm -hmm. is bought from stolen public funds? Mm -hmm. I raised that in Mango, I raised that in Hillcrest, and the kids were saying, oh yeah, that's a different line of thought. Mm -hmm. We could be flossing and looking all good, but then the things that we are flossing about, the house we are living in, is actually bought with stolen public funds. Mm -hmm. We must let these young kids know that if the dad is doing a wrong thing, they have a right to speak out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not about protecting your dad. It's about protecting your future. Mm. Because that dad will definitely be caught up. I mean, Kinoti is not joking with guys nowadays. <laughs> How are we not supporting him? We are bashing Kinoti left, right, and center. We are bashing him. And this is just a normal Kenyan doing his normal work. Mm -hmm. Here's, I mean, I'll tell you, I've gone to the DCI's office, and the service there is what I should see in many government offices. I'm sorry, I haven't gone to Ezekiel's office. I know they also have good service. <laughs> but, I mean, you, you are served by cops, and you don't yes. feel like you're being served by cops. Previously, mm -hmm. people felt intimidated. 
You go to a cop office and you're like, no, I fear. I don't want to talk. Mm -hmm. I don't want to share this. These are people who tell you, could you organize a forum for us with the community because we want to demystify what policing is about. Mm -hmm. Can't we go to these offices as leaders? Why don't we bring these people to the level because they want to go there? Thank you. Dr. Kiruri, uh, still on media, then we come to also justice. Uh, in this country, you picked up also this particular uh, story on, uh, on the Daily Nation, uh, Peter. We shall also just uh, talk about justice in the country as well. But o on media uh, and the stories we, we tell, are we poisoning the nation? Uh, do you also hold to the view that is being also put forth by our, our fellow panelists? Um, yes and no. <laughs> yes, because as a generally what sells, and uh, you know, I've talked with many people in media. I, I, I have been part of a, a process that helps identify ethical leaders in Kenya, people who are doing things the right way. And uh, part of our challenge has been to publicize this to tell Kenyans there is hope, because a, a lot of the reasons why corruption continues to, you know, to, to be propagated is because people don't believe it, there's any other way. They don't mm -hmm. believe you can make it. So we want to show people, people who are doing business or in leadership and doing various things, doing it the right way and succeeding right here in Kenya. In mm -hmm. fact, the, large, the, the biggest of this is through, through a group called Elnet. The biggest of these has a, a turnover of a, a billion shillings. So it is possible to make a billion shillings without being corrupt. But when you try to sell that kind of news to the media, I actually have had um, a chief editor in one of the stations, I cannot name which one, um, tell me that's not news, you know, and so on. And I know it was at the height of when, when the nation was very discouraged. And I wanted to bring that. So there is a yes there. No, in the sense that, as people said, you have, of course, a chance to choose and so on. So, but maybe let me give a, a, a possible way forward. I personally feel, at this point in time, I really wish, maybe if I was a minister for <laughs> information, I would definitely encourage every media station to carry a positive message. Because like uh, Dr. Mutua said, only positive news really en encourages. It is what gives people hope. When people feel down and beaten, they, they are not able to do anything about their situation. So yes, I think largely we are a negative society. We thrive on negativity. And I think uh, we do definitely need to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe part of our leadership should look at how, what can we do to support the things, the causes that are positive, that are changing. Because even like what uh, Peter is telling us here about the, you know, the prisons, you know, we haven't had that, that full story, yet positive things are happening in this country. Mm -hmm. So more can be done. More can be done. Mm -hmm. should, should we keep away from uh, social media and uh, the traditional media as uh, uh, Reverend uh, Geoffrey was uh, <laughs> trying to, to allude to? Yeah? I, I, you want to keep her out of out of business. <laughs> I, 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 I think uh, there is a point about, uh, you know, again, what you choose to propagate. I, I am on social media. I don't get there as often as I'd wish to it because of my work. But I have made a choice personally. I only share positive news. Yes. Because there's enough, there are enough people trying to sell, sell, sell the negative. Mm -hmm. And I feel not many people are picking up. So I pick up only on positive news about Kenya, about my workplace, about you know, this, the community. Because I think that's what inspires people to do something uh, with what they have. Right. I think so long as, and, and, and maybe to the viewers who are feeling discouraged about the situation, there was a question there about, you know, are we not really facing the reality? Mm -hmm. I think when, so long as I'm involved in doing something with what I have in my little corner, I never actually feel weighed down by all the other negatives that mm -hmm. other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Because I'm doing what I can with what I have in yes. my space. Mm -hmm. And I think if everyone of us did something every day, and uh, of course I wish the media could pick up, whether social media, mainstream media, uh, on some of the positives, I think we definitely would be able to fuel, uh, I know that the, the change <laughs> we want to see happen, we'll be able to see a mass movement towards the positive. Right. Yeah. Just to add on to that, uh, Dibal, uh, I thank Tim for that. Yeah. The, the thing briefly, very briefly. It, yeah, very briefly. Social media can be very addictive. Mm. And social media is also making people lose their jobs. Yeah. Because you go to Ezekiel's office for an interview, yeah. and you're texting, and Ezekiel wants to interview you. Thierry, you've lost that job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't even think about it. So I, I've been a victim of this. <laughs> I, I know, and I'm fighting to keep off my phone. So I've put the, the, the whatever on how much time I can spend uh -huh. on yeah. social media. Yeah. It's good to get that information, but it's also good to filter it, because some can sensationalize mm. uh, you know, non-existent issues. And, and, and right? the value is about balance. Yeah. You're not against the media. Yeah. Um, I, I think media is a cardinal pillar of democracy mm -hmm. and we couldn't be where we are as a nation without a free and independent media. I have worked as a journalist here in this building for nine years. I know what it means. I was the Secretary General of Kenya Union of Journalists. I've been the Director of Information. I treasure press freedom. I fought for it. But I do know also the dangers that can come with irresponsible media that does not uphold self regulation and professionalism. Let's not hide uh, or run away from those facts and say there is need for balance. Mm -hmm. It's about balance and it's about the ball doing unto others what you would want them to do to you. That as I write a story, and this was my 
These are principles I believed in while I worked in this, when this was the biggest media house in East, Eastern Central Africa. It is still I is. realized I was watching. It still is. Hey, hey, we need it, to it still is. This is misinformation. It still is. It still is. Yes, yes. But I believed then that to, 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 to him, who much, who much is given, much is expected. We That's used right. to have a tagline here that you walk tall, you work for Nation mm -hmm. Media Group. And what I believed is that when I ran a story, even when the editor put it as a filler, yes. it used to have power and it used to be read mm -hmm. because I worked for the nation. Mm -hmm. And for nine years, I never had a case against me mm -hmm. on my stories. There are many other journalists like that that I know. Yes. And what I'm trying to say is that you don't have to defame people. You don't have to destroy reputation, Thank you. Yeah. destroy families and careers. That is not the calling of a journalist. But you can expose evil for what it is. You can expose corruption, but have a balance where there is fairness, there is accuracy, and where you are responsible as a journalist. Right. So exposing evil for what it is, then you are actually uh, going through the rigors of justice. But you are also feeling that uh, in this country there is no justice at all. And uh, uh, Peter has alluded to that, what he went through as well. Can we also focus on the justice uh, system in the country, the judiciary, as it is right now? Ca should we keep working with our system? I think we should. Um, and. Um, there's something that bothers me about this country, and it is, um, as a nation, we talk too much and do very little. And we have too much information that we do very little with. At the personal level, you can also be talking too much and doing very little. You Perhaps you know people who keep saying, they will begin business one day. You ask them which business, they don't know. When, they don't know. How much, they don't know. But they think it's a good idea to begin a business. I think as a nation, mm -hmm. We need to stop analyzing, over-analyzing things. I was looking at the BBI report. It is not saying anything new. It's something we could do and do very quickly and move on. Remember, we've had all manner of discussions about the Constitution, and then we went on and on and on and on. I think, yes, analysis has its place, and I think we need to do good research. But then if we must change, it is action now. Talking matters justice, I sympathize with the, the judicial process and system in this country. I think it's broken to a large extent, but I think it can be redeemed um, by doing things which have greater impact. What stops that system from nailing three or four of those big thieves? And then we can celebrate that. I mean, surely they can afford that. But, but, but you're being challenged uh, here that we have the middle class who are, you know, just talking. But when it, when it comes to remedial actions, we cannot see anything really coming from here, the middle class. Here, I'm addressing uh, the people who exist there with the money they have there, not what they hope they can get with what they have there. Surely, isn't there something they can do? If they are jailing the chicken thief and a guy caught uh, doing a few things out there very quickly, why not get some of these people who have been dancing around in the courtrooms uh, and going on for years? Why can't we do a little with what we have? That's what I'm talking about. And bar the conversation is about keep walking. Yeah, yes. keep walking. Even at the judiciary. Yeah, keep walking. Even with the little money that there is. Keep walking. Honestly, <laughs> we cannot say we'll never dispense justice because there, there is a, you know, or shortage of funds. Measures, yes. or shortage of funds. There's something, they need to be innovative. They need to be innovative. Let me tell you, when I joined KFCB, the annual budget was 88 million. We are blessed by God and we find, we, we thank the government, we have increased our budget to something substantive. Uh, I mean, How much? With, uh, we, are, we are operating at around 600, but Ooh. we are partnerships and uh, programs yes. that are funded in cash and kind. We estimate ourselves to be at 2.14 uh, 2 billion wow. from 88 million in uh, the four years that I've been there. I'm not blowing my trumpet, it's but uh, SCAC that rates us has rated me 99 for three years in a row. So. Uh, this is, and uh, you never publish that story. We never publish. Right, right, right. The story is never known, so people think I only ban films. But they think you're not into conflict of interest because you're a former journalist at Nation Media. Yes. You expect the ban and Nation yes. Media just to say, it's yeah, but, all, but, but this is all, you know. You see, when I ban, when I ban films, <laughs> or we have an issue in our decisions, that will be reported, and I always say, is it, you know, when you bring that perspective, yes, yes, yes. people would respect it and say, yeah, these guys could be, you know, reigning terror. Yeah, yeah. But they, 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 they are also doing something good. Good. Yeah. And this is what I say about judiciary as well. Dibal, justice is our shoot and defender. That is our national yes. anthem. Yeah. And justice is everything. There is nothing as good as knowing 
that if we differ with the reverend here, I'll get justice. <laughs> that if my, car, my cow is stolen for mm -hmm. that villager there, that they will get justice. There is a place they can go. Right. Our judicial system has challenges, but it's one of the best. This is one of the countries where we saw a presidential election nullified by the Supreme Court. A tough decision. What I'm saying is, let but, us but this not is, look at but the this, shortage. Yes, but this there is, are issues. There, yes. There, yes, as we come to uh, Pete, but this is still the same country where we saw, uh, I, I, I can't remember how, how old she was, but in the 80s. This grandmother who was actually, you know, put in the slammers because of stolen, uh, you know... Uh, of course, that was yeah, ridiculous. It, it was, yeah, stolen, uh, and it, it was not her who actually stole. It was, it was property which was stolen, found in her house, I think by the grandson who had stolen the, the, the chairs. And uh, she was uh, put in jail. Yet, we have millions and billions of shillings being stolen in this country, mm -hmm. and people go scot-free because of bail. Pete. There is injustice. There is injustice. There, absolutely. And, and I think if I look around me, I will, I will not just see stories, but I know people who have been unjustly treated by our systems. And I think the question we're dealing with here is not about glossing over with positive thinking and, and saying that somehow life will get better. We need to accept that there are serious problems in our systems. And then we need to... And I think what I like about this forum is we're looking not just at the big issues, we're looking at the small issues mm -hmm. as well, because these two work together. We need uh, to also realize that change does not happen with everybody walking on their own. So that's something that we haven't really uh, spent a lot of time on here, that uh, we are in this together. Mm -hmm. you know, and I encourage people, form something, join something, become part of a lobby. Become part of something that is working to move the needle in the right direction. Because if you are sitting back and seeing a problem, I can tell you most likely you as an individual would not be able to push that thing up the mountain. Mm -hmm. But even politics runs on numbers. You know, if we can come together, whether it's the churches, whether it's the, the, the students' bodies, whether it's whatever it is, join something that says our resolve is to make this country a better place. Mm -hmm. And with that resolve, it does not mean things are going to stop immediately. But we must say, I reject evil. I reject injustice, and I'm going to work towards it. And actually, the, the fruits of this might come even after my lifetime. And I think that's a reality we need to be also to be aware of, that if I don't see something happening in the short term, it does not mean I should not pursue it. I'm going to work on it because I believe it is the right thing. Mm -hmm. I do the right thing because I believe that I'm investing in something that I should be investing right. in. Right. Yeah. I was just reminded uh, yesterday that honesty is such a lonely word in this country. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I was sitting down with a, a friend of mine and uh, he, he was telling me, you know, in this country you cannot survive if you're not a thug. Mm. You need to be a smart thug. Mm. And I came out really broken. I wondered, truly, where is a place of honesty in this country? If you do your things straight, you will never actually, you know, maneuver your way and uh, have what is supposed to be, you know, deservedly yours in this country. You have to be a thug to actually proceed in life in Kenya. Yeah. I, but I, I think can we change this narrative? And how do we change this narrative? Because if I come with my good papers, and you put them out, out there, you, everything is ticking, you know, you're a taxpayer, you got a year, they, they integrity the list that they normally, yeah, but this is what they the say. I walked uh, in this building uh, without knowing anyone. At the reception down there, I called for the editorial was it, was it Was it a very different epic of time? Maybe you're in a different dispensation altogether. I do not know. But this is not the narrative that we want to spew. We just, this That's is one perception. side of the story. That's I'm, what I'm, I'm saying. just giving a, a, case, a case in point. I'm just yeah. giving a case in point. Pete, uh, Peter. I, I, think, I think I agree with you. That's the perception. And even there was, a, there was a survey that painted that gloomy picture. And I said, we have to move from that gloom. Mm -hmm. I believe majority of Kenyans, we have over 45 million. Majority of Kenyans, more than 43 million or 44 million, or 44.5 million actually doing very good things. And yet those very few who are, you know, rotting the basket, so to speak, are the ones where the focus goes to. Let me just go back to the judiciary before mm -hmm. I make my point. Yes, please. We've been blaming the judiciary a lot. I know we've come from a broken down system. We've tried to improve it. We still have challenges, even what we are reading in the media today. But then, if I don't go and give evidence in court, how will that case be determined? We go and make complaints, but when we are supposed to go and give evidence in court, we don't turn up. We have unnecessary adjournments one after the other, and because the media will write about this article as a headline, 
but they will not follow up. So public interest wins in that interest, in that article. I'll give you a practical example straight from The Nation. When I, I mean, I started reading The Nation when I was five years old. The Goldenberg scandal that was done by your former journalist, Peter Barutere, it kept me on tenterhooks because it was sustained until the very end. Mm. So could we have a media tracker of the corruption cases that have been taken to court and the stages at which they are? Because you can easily get that from the judiciary. So the public is informed and the public does not feel the judiciary is not doing its bit, blah, blah, blah. We have judges who want to do cases from morning to evening to completion. But then the witnesses are not there, the lawyers as well. When you talk about the judiciary, not necessarily just look at the bench. Let's look at the bar, let's look at everybody in the pl playing in the criminal justice system. Do we have enough funds to give the witnesses to come to court? Do we have enough funding for the witness protection program? <laughs> so that if there are these high profile cases, the witnesses feel adequately protected and they can give their evidence without being exposed. I saw someone giving, uh, I mean yesterday, someone sharing that uh, about an Al-Shabaab uh, uh, suspect yes. who had surrendered. But then we splashed his face out there. Why don't we cover his face? Because if he surrendered and he was to help the country, we splash his face, his family will be known, we're exposing him to danger. So I think there are some of these ethical things we just need to look at before we blame the judiciary wholly. I'm saying they are also very lazy judicial officers who don't want to do cases. I started by saying that there. But then, can't we crack the whip? Can't we just come out and say, the Chief Justice, he has the power. You have the power to do what is right and what is just. Right. The Judicial Service Commission, what is it doing about this lethargy in our judicial system? But as a public, I just want to encourage guys, if there's a case in court, you saw something happening, go write that statement. Bring that evidence to court. And then let's say we brought our evidence, it was wrongfully adjudicated, we have a chance for appeal. The other misconception we are having is about the bail terms. Yes. You know, we, we feel that people are going free because they've committed this crime and they've been given bail. What do we expect? The constitution here that we passed, I have also voted for it from prison, I think, here. The constitution that we passed granted bail to everyone. And when we were agitating for bail to be granted from prison, our view was some of us who were wrongfully convicted were staying in prison for so long without having our cases heard. Mm -hmm. Yet, at the end of it, when you come out after 18, 20 years, there's no compensation. People are rotting here. People have come from prison. We're just starting an association of returning citizens. Mm -hmm. We don't call them ex-inmates. We don't want to stigmatize anyone mm -hmm. anymore. They committed their, their, their whatever they committed. They've made peace with themselves. They've paid back to society. They want to start their lives afresh. Can we use this pool of talent? Can we give them a second chance? Can we give them the space to make this country better? I'm asking myself hard questions. Why should I, as a governor of X county, yes. give tenders for cleaning services to outside people when the people, the young people in that county mm -hmm. can do the cleaning services within that very county and earn a living and, you know, start up. They can get the savings, go to college, blah, blah, blah. Why don't we have affirmative action in the small things so that we don't have these cases going all over? Pete gave a tender to Dibal. Dibal gave a tender to Ezekiel, blah, blah, blah. Let's tell the youth. They're doing it. Go to Dondora. Positive story at Thank Pastor Seed. Thank you. All right, let's hear from uh, Tim. Thank you. I think um, as you talk about the justice system, for me again, it boils down to the, the individual Kenyan. Are we a people who are committed or willing to be under the rule of law? And I think generally speaking, we don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether it's overlapping on the road, in the, in the small things. <laughs> if I can, it can help me get ahead or in a queue or whatever else it is, we haven't built that as a value. So I would go back to, if we want to change the justice system, I think the first thing is to change the values of the average Kenyan. And that's why I, in my earlier um, you know, sharing there, I, I talked a bit about why I'm excited about the vision of KICD, the Kenya Institute for Curriculum Development, in terms of the CBC curriculum, that they want to help uh, children, and eventually these are our future leaders and Kenyan citizens, to be ethical, to be engaged, and to be empowered. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's so beautiful, because I, I don't think there's anything else we need, is to be able to engage these systems and everything else, and to see it's possible. Mm -hmm. I've been a part, you know, and why I was excited about that is because I was part of a team of 15 who helped to bring in values into version 2030, which is exactly what they are basing this, this, this on. We were ordinary Kenyans. Yes. None of us had uh, any you know, special privileges or anything like that, but we felt that the version 2030 was okay, except that it had no value system. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to help bring that in. Now, many years later, it is making a difference. Thank you. So I think it's in the small things. Mm -hmm. Do what you can with what you have. Thank you, you never know how it's going to play out in the future mm -hmm. to make a difference. Right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, as we're also preparing our headline thoughts briefly, mm -hmm. uh, we know we were talking about co consumption, uh, mm -hmm. what we consume, and you also being the Zav, uh, watching what we consume as well. Uh, from the books, and I know there was a, a report 
that is in the public domain about uh, a book which was giving you know suicide as one of the options uh, for you to you know consider yeah. when you are sort sort of really frustrated as well and it, i know the publisher went to uh, full see my head and also you know apologize for this and it's been pulled out of uh, you know the circulation as it is right mm. now but how did we even reach there mm. that we can have a children consuming such content yeah. uh, from our books briefly as we're winding up uh, uh, dr ezekiel mutua i think irresponsible adults will bring up irresponsible children but irresponsible systems will breed irresponsibility across and I think uh, what we need to do, rather than point figures, like mm -hmm. we said, is to do what we ought to do as individuals. And I think it all begins with me. At my own turf, and within my own purview, what can I do, and can I be the best version of myself yes. in my current situation? Mm. This is what, about, uh, what, what it's all about, keeping walking. Because life will never be, you know, uh, uh, what they call a bed of roses. Yes. There will always be challenges. There will be challenges in our families, in our societies, in our companies, in our government. We got to focus on what is positive and the things that we can do. Thank you. And we cannot prescribe negativity and depression and killing ourselves as the option. Thank you. We got to be people who treasure life and who focus on living Thank and you. prescribing hope to others. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ezekiel Mutua. Reverend uh, Geoffrey Njenga. a mistake. Uh, as we uh, uh, term ourselves as developed, it seems to, to be, to me, like being modern is about focusing on me, and me, myself, and I. I think we need to accept there is a God in heaven who governs in the affairs of men. The moment we move the God value and factor from our lives, the more we move into suicide and all those other things as a factor in right. life. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. One option. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Pete, you're winding the yeah, shots. Deval, uh, Deval, thank you. I just want to use my closing remarks to give a direct challenge to, to somebody to plant a seed. In about two years, maybe two and a half years, we're going to be going to the elections. And I know there are people here who are already lamenting that at the polls, we are going to have only to choose between this and this, whether it's at the county level or the national level. I want to challenge you, those of you who have the gifting, who have the opportunity, to ask yourself, is this the only narrative? Or are you going to do something, you who have the opportunity, to be where others don't have the opportunity? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, let's hear from uh, Peter. Your closing yeah, remarks, on, the, on the school thing, I think we need to be serious about quality control. We need to be serious on what we send out. I mean, that was a big gasp. And it goes beyond the apology. I think uh, someone should take responsibility and uh, just say, I, am, I messed up and I'm resigning. Uh, other than that, as a country, I think we're in a good place. Things are down. I feel you. I mean, when you say things are down, I agree things are down. But I believe we can make it better. And it starts with you and it starts with me in my space. Don't pay corruption. Don't, don't support corruption. Don't support negativity. Thank don't you. support the negative things and just right. support positive stuff. Okay. Dr. Tim. Three things very quickly. One, remember why you need to keep walking. You know, having the why is what will keep you going. Secondly, like Pete said, enlist other people. It's difficult to make significant change or to get to the destination often alone. Mm -hmm. Finally, make life fun. Enjoy the process. You know, celebrate the small wins right. and keep going. Thank you. Thank you very much, our panelists. We really do appreciate and I hope you inspired this morning. And of course, this subject was inspired by an old story about Roberto Baggio, uh, who, if you may remember, and you actually can remember uh, if you're a football fan, Roberto Baggio lost, you know, in 1994, I think, uh, in the World Cup. And he was really castigated uh, uh, for this. And then he had a redeeming, you know, moment for him in 1998 where he scored again. And if you can remember that particular beautiful uh, advertisement by John, uh, Johnny Walker, right? Keep walking. It's, it's a story, right? Roberto said, I'll keep walking. Don't, don't despair. Keep up, of course, looking for hopeful events in your life. Don't look at those challenging events that are putting you down. That is the essence of keep walking no matter what. Right, we continue, Pesabi, just to show you what we